An active pattern continuing across the United States as severe weather looks to move east over the week ahead, bringing all hazards with it. And this could last quite some time. Also, eyes off the southeast coastline as a disturbed area of weather moves ashore, bringing tropical moisture and a rainfall threat for many. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Wednesday, June 4th. And uh, hopefully we're having an all right day out there. Uh, again, uh, June normally a more quiet month, but so far being uh, pretty active out there with that severe weather potential. Uh, some tropical mischief we've been watching off the Carolina coastline now moving ashore. I'm going to give you the latest on all of it in today's video. So if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Great way to stay up to date as we continue uh, kind of tracking this pattern here. And don't worry, I'll be with you all year long as we get into the heart of hurricane season. And before you know it, we'll be uh, breaking down winter storms again. And I'm sure many of you are excited for that as I am. But before we get there, we do have to get on through the rest of severe weather season. And then, of course, uh, the dreaded hurricane season ahead. Uh, at least dreaded for many folks, and uh, rightfully so. All right, let's go dive on into things and give you the latest here, folks, starting with our satellite imagery. This is infrared loop, and I picked infrared today because it's showing where we have uh, pockets of the most active weather. One area here off the southeast coastline now moving northward towards the Carolinas. That's going to bring a rainfall threat and an isolated tornado potential. We'll talk about that in today's video as well. Back out west, uh, you can see we've got this big thin line of uh, clouds. This is a frontal system slowly working on through the country. It actually brought a lot of tornado warnings yesterday uh, to the Oklahoma City metro. Luckily, from what I saw, only about one or two touched down, and that was in the forecast. We mentioned brief tornadoes possible, and that's really what they were. These were, uh, are not uh, very strong tornadoes, just very brief uh, light ones. But um, I, I can assure you that uh, the warning was out yesterday. Uh, a little side tangent here, Oklahoma City's uh, TV market uh, is one of those markets that weathers everything. And uh, anytime there's a tornado warning, it becomes this big competition that all the stations rush to get the best coverage, which is good for the viewer, obviously. You've got plenty of choices of accurate information out there. Um, but uh, anytime there's any tornado warning, trust me, they, they get the word out. So uh, that is good news out there. But uh, again, still seeing active weather out there for many of us on this Wednesday. And as we switch it over to radar imagery, uh, you can kind of see this quite well uh, over here as well. Now, we've got all that rain off the southeast coastline. It's been a rainy couple of days in Florida. Now that's lifting north, still in Florida, but Georgia, South Carolina getting in on the action. And by tomorrow, North Carolina and portions of Virginia will join the party here as that tropical moisture begins to lift northward. Now, again, back towards the plains and the Mississippi River Valley, still dealing with some rain as well. We've got rain from Michigan all the way back down to the Four Corners region. It's kind of frontal system out this way and uh, part of it is going to get bogged down here and we're going to just see round after round after round day after day after day of severe weather potential here over the southern plains and eventually it's even going to snake into the southeast where we could see complexes of storms work on through by the time we get to this weekend uh, that could lead to some severe weather potential so that'll be a big topic in today's video but before we dive too much into the severe weather side of things let's take a look at this rainfall threat in the southeast and break down that potential tropical trouble. All right, let's take a look at the southeast now. We've been talking about that area of interest off the Carolina coastline. Good news, this one's not going to get a name. However, the impacts are still the same either way, the same ones we talked about yesterday and on Monday as well. So let's time it out for you. This is this afternoon, about noon, 1, 2 o'clock. Uh, you can see that rain already working up into South Carolina and Georgia, as we saw on radar imagery. Uh, and it's going to continue to lift north throughout the day today and into the overnight. Check it out by the time we get to this evening, again, Wednesday evening and crossing towards the midnight hour that rain lifting north charlotte and points east in north carolina going to have the highest chance of seeing that rain us 74 corridor from again kind of independence boulevard if you're familiar with the charlotte metro uh, back down towards the beaches towards wilmington yeah i do expect some showers and stormy activity but we could even get some rain uh, as far west as the upstate and even into the foothills could see some showers but just uh, again the highest rainfall potential and the most rain that will fall will be east of that U.S. 77 corridor. Again, Raleigh out towards the Outer Banks, southeast Virginia, uh, and then again towards the PD, the Grand Strand, and into the Sand Hills. Now, another thing we need to watch is the potential of maybe a brief isolated tornado. Check out tomorrow afternoon. We've got um, not a lot of ingredients for severe weather, but enough. I think it's worth mentioning. We've got surface low here, and it's always that right front quadrant 
uh, that often can have uh, a couple spin ups potentially. And we do have a lot of spin in the atmosphere tomorrow. If we get breaks in the clouds between these rounds of storms, that's going to increase our instability. And that could lead to maybe a brief isolated tornado or two in eastern North Carolina and into the PD of South Carolina tomorrow. Again, not a big threat, not something that I'm expecting an outbreak from, but again, just have your guard out. Should a tornado warning be issued, know what to do. Interior room, no windows, lowest level. Uh, if you've got a storm shelter, which many of us in the Carolinas don't, but if you just happen to, obviously that'd be the place to go or a basement, uh, which uh, I think a good amount of folks out here do, especially with those older uh, older homes. Um, all right. So again, we'll, uh, we'll watch out for that for sure. But either way, rainfall is going to be something uh, that is uh, noticeable with this system. This is by tomorrow evening, still raining in eastern North Carolina, still scattered showers in the Carolinas in general, but again, the highest chance of rain and maybe a, a quick spin up uh, there into eastern North Carolina by your overnight Thursday. And then eventually we'll pull out by Friday. Uh, this is just as far out as this model run goes. So we're going to stick to that one. But uh, let's take a look at rainfall potential out of this guy. Again, not going to get the name Andrea, but uh, still going to see some pretty impressive rainfall. Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, Charleston up towards Jacksonville, North Carolina, and then into the Outer Banks. Going to see the most of it. A couple play, uh, spots here could get greater than two inches, maybe two to four inches of rain. That's enough that a couple folks, again, could get in on some isolated flooding. Not a huge threat, but again, worth mentioning. As you bet, uh, get back towards Columbia and Charlotte, lower totals probably around an inch or so. Then as you get towards the upstate Greenville, Spartanburg, up into the mountains of North Carolina, more of a, a trace, if you will, uh, on the rain gauge there, upwards of maybe a quarter of an inch, but not, not a lot. You can definitely see the gradient here uh, across the Carolinas, the highest in the east, the lowest out west. And then spoiler alert, here's what's to come out into the Ohio Valley. That's what we're going to switch on over to and talk about now is that severe weather potential. Well, the severe weather pattern, like most things in meteorology, is going to come back to the upper levels, and uh, we talk about this a lot on the channel today, no different. Basically, the jet stream is just uh, aggravated, <laughs> to put it uh, lightly here. This is this afternoon. You can see we've got this big dip in the jet up to the north, and uh, anytime you see these brighter colors, that is an indication of a boundary in the atmosphere between warmer and colder temperatures. So it's been warmer in the east. We've had this ridge, uh, again, warmer temperatures there, but it's quite cold up into uh, the Hudson Bay area of Canada, so you get that strong jet stream in between. Uh, now, you also get more subtle areas of this over the plains. Uh, we'll call it the southern plains here from New Mexico back into the panhandles. That's also going to produce some lift, and it's always on the right-hand side of these things uh, that you get some uh, speed divergence in this case. So, um, or I guess convergence, really. But uh, either way, that we've got a bit of a jet streak there. We've got all sorts of things going on. Uh, that uh, are leading to enough lift in the atmosphere for some pockets of storms. And that's going to stay aggravated here uh, over the week ahead. So we'll move it ahead into time. You can see that big jet in the north just continued at divergence here. Uh, we've got a little bit of lift in the atmosphere here with that upper level wind shear and wind speeds over the southern plains. We're going to keep things active that way. We've also got that jet stream to the north. That could produce some stronger storms up into the northeast, maybe even into the Great Lakes. Uh, this is by tomorrow into Friday. Then notice what happens. We get uh, a more pronounced jet over the Ohio Valley, over this uh, kind of central Mississippi Valley here uh, by the time we get towards the weekend. And that could even work towards the southeast. And then here comes the next big storyline, big upper level low piece of energy by early next week swings on down. And that could bring its own active weather here for many folks. So that's kind of the next week here. Again, just waves of this um a uh, kind of choppy jet stream that is going to lead to some active weather. And we'll take a look at it from the Storm Prediction Center. They do have a couple areas to watch. This is today. Again, that area down south over Texas, uh, back over towards Albuquerque, Santa Fe. That's with that... Um, a uh, little piece of the active jet down that way. And then to the north, we've got that active jet that could lead to a couple strong storms. Detroit, Bay City, Toledo, back down into Indiana, even towards St. Louis. The tornado threat today, not very high for many of us, but uh, maybe some New Mexico magic here uh, near Clovis. Uh, back over towards Las Vegas, New Mexico, really right along the I-40 corridor in the eastern half of the state. Could even get into the Texas Panhandle, uh, not far from Lubbock here towards uh, Hereford uh, and the Dimmit area. So we'll watch it. Not a big deal, but could see a brief spin up today. Strong straight line winds. Large hail will be the biggest threat in those original places I showed you that were shaded in. Tomorrow, 
start to crank things up. Again, we've got the big jet up into the northeast that could produce severe weather there. Uh, more aggravated jet down to the south where we have a little bit more instability over Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. I could also aggravate things. And guess what? The tornado threat tomorrow yeah, starts to get bumped up a little bit. We're running a 5% chance of a quick spin up anywhere from Beaver County, Oklahoma, over towards Elkhart, uh, Ulysses, Liberal, Kansas, back down towards Amarillo, Lubbock, and uh, kind of up towards the Plainview area. So uh, not a huge deal again, but higher than today could definitely see a tornado or two tomorrow in the panhandles and even in to extreme southwestern Kansas. We'll keep you updated and watch out for it there. Uh, now let's switch on over though, take a look at some model guidance into this area and uh, take a look then eventually at the longer range as well and keep you updated on that severe weather potential. All right, let's take a look at the near term here and then we'll zoom out and take a look at the longer term severe weather pattern. Uh, this is this afternoon. Obviously, we've got that area in the southeast we've been talking about, but we've got showers into the central part of the country as well. Again, a couple of these could become strong to severe, uh, especially by this evening. Notice some of those brighter returns over the St. Louis metro back up towards Illinois and even potentially up into Michigan and then back down the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, now we'll watch that and then uh, you can see by the time we get to tomorrow on Thursday, uh, the tomorrow afternoon, obviously a lot of rain in the Carolinas and Virginia, as we've been talking about. Uh, but take a look back out west towards Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. Here comes a disturbance out of Colorado. This is really by overnight tomorrow. So you can see kind of a one-two punch tomorrow. We've got the morning severe weather round there uh, into potentially Texas, Oklahoma. Uh, and then you get another round of severe weather by the evening of Thursday and overnight into Friday. Uh, bringing rounds of showers and storms. And I think that'll be the big theme really through the next week is these complexes of storms, uh, these MCSs, maybe a derecho could get mixed into the conversation here uh, over the next week or so. I don't see big supercell outbreaks. I don't see uh, just a lot of pop-up storms, kind of these complexes of multi-cell storms uh, I think are really going to be the big theme for quite some time here. And that often becomes the case in June. Uh, the wind shear sometimes relaxes a little bit, but the instability increases and that oftentimes can lead to these um, higher end complexes of storms that we need to watch out for. So that'll be the big theme in the next couple of days. And spoiler alert, could be the theme longer range, although we could mix in some supercells. And with that said, let's take a look at it here and give you the latest for the rest of the week ahead. All right, here's our bulk shear parameter. This is wind shear from the surface about halfway up into the atmosphere. And it's really just a great gauge of uh, indicating what types of storms we're going to see. Are they going to be those multi-cells I mentioned, or could we sneak in a couple supercells? Uh, and you'll see either way, we've got a lot of bulk shear. This is by the time, let's bring it all the way out to Friday because we looked at uh, today and tomorrow's outlook. So uh, we'll start this on Friday. Notice Again, bulk shear increasing over the heart of the country. Also areas of the Great Lakes seeing some of that higher in bulk shear. Uh, this is in knots. We're seeing knots of around 40. A couple areas trying to clip 50 knots. That's generally more uh, indicative of multi-cells with some supercells. Uh, and again, I think that'll really be the theme here. We're going to have multi-cell complexes with some embedded supercells. But notice, though, it just hangs around for quite some time. We've got a lot of this shear parked over the east central part of the country and over the southern plains through the weekend. Even tries to get east. Check it out by Saturday. Kentucky, Tennessee, the Carolinas uh, seeing some increase in the wind shear values. That could promote some stronger storms for our folks out that way by the weekend. And uh, then by early next week, here comes that next big storm system showing up. That also could produce some severe weather that we'll need to take a look at. Uh, now, the latest from the Storm Prediction Center, uh, they're uh, showing this as well quite well. This is day three, so this is going to be your Friday outlook. Big area to watch all the way from Pueblo, Colorado, all the way out to Charlotte, North Carolina. Could see a couple strong storms. We'll keep you updated on it. Uh, again, too soon for them to issue whether it's going to be tornado threat, wind threat, hail threat. I can go and tell you now, though, highest likelihood would uh, be that this is more of a straight line wind threat some large hail and an isolated tornado or two we'll need to watch for but uh, again you get these big areas generally that means you're going to have these complexes of storms that kind of start out west uh, here towards Texas Oklahoma and then just slowly or I guess in this case pretty quickly March eastbound that'd be for Friday we're not done yet check out Saturday again Amarillo all the way to Charleston South Carolina out towards the Grand Strand could see some strong storms and all points in between so you get the point active pattern, uh, more of an MCS pattern, and that's what we'll definitely be taking a look at here with this setup. See it as well with the supercell composite from the GFS. Like I said, mainly a linear mode here, but a couple supercells could mix in. Here's Friday afternoon. Uh, again, the highest supercell potential would be over the Southern Plains, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Uh, you can see uh, thin margins here of higher numbers, but generally speaking on the lower side for most of us, 
Uh, then you can see by Saturday afternoon and into Sunday, again, a relatively lower end supercell potential, but enough of a parameter here that uh, we could see a couple mix into these squall lines, uh, kind of those embedded supercells that kind of get going and could produce a tornado threat as well as stronger wind and stronger hail. Uh, you can see the supercell threat stays the highest again over the Southern Plains, tries to eke past the uh, Mississippi here, uh, but really Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, the usual suspect areas this time of year, going to have the highest chance at tornadoes. Uh, over the next week, but severe weather stretching uh, quite far east from there with this pattern. Uh, latest from the European model, let's time it out for you. This is Thursday afternoon. You can see just these complexes of storms hanging around by Friday. Uh, more of the same. Notice again how they kind of get going here over Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. At the early stages, they could be more discrete, more supercellular, uh, and then eventually transitioning into more of that MCS squall line look, and then they march east eventually towards the Carolinas. So uh, that'll be the big theme again by Saturday. Same thing. You get some supercells that form out west, eventually congeal into a line of storms and march east day after day of that likely through the weekend, and then early next week, Check out this big upper level low spinning over the uh, Great Lakes here and moving south. That could bring some stormy activity with it, as well as a cool down in the temperature department. We've had a pretty chilly June the past couple of years for some folks. Uh, this one could get shots of it as well. Uh, these are our temperatures today. The anomaly, so red or orange, I guess, on this case, means above average temperatures, blue meaning below average temperatures, and then that kind of in-between zone, uh, you're about what you should be this time of year. Watch what happens, though. Uh, we're warm in the east, a little uh, cooler out into the plains. I noticed by the weekend, here comes this big upper-level low out of Canada. And yeah, this is by next Monday. We've got a lot of blue showing up in the east, cooler than average temperatures, um, you know, might make you think that we're skipping to fall. Not quite. Don't worry. Uh, Hades will be back eventually. Uh, but uh, before we get to that point by the weekend, again, uh, steamy for most of us. This is by Saturday afternoon. Again, the west is warm. The south is warm. A little more average below average in the east central part of the country. By early next week, though, here comes that cool down with that potential upper level system working on through. Alrighty, folks. Well, that's all I got for you on this Wednesday. Again, appreciate you hanging in there with me. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you all tomorrow.